So today we've got the new MacBook Pro 13 inch for 2020. Well, new, it's kind of new. It's a bit of a refresh. They have addressed the most important thing on this particular model, which is the keyboard. I don't know if you guys have been following the saga here on the channel, I presume so, but Apple has had some difficulty with their low profile keyboards on laptops for a while now. Something called the butterfly key switch, which was uh, innovative at the time. It gave you this sort of impossibly low profile clicky keyboard it came alongside some pretty significant issues and a number of failures you, you can find it in forums you can find it on reddit you can find it actually here in the studio with the, all the various macbook pros that we've had and we've had plenty because we do choose to edit on final cut pro which is a mac specific video editing app so jack had a macbook pro kirk had a macbook pro will myself it was time for apple to move on they did move on with the 16 inch macbook pro then they moved on with the macbook air and then this was the last one to join the party going back to a more traditional scissor style key switch. So I'm interested to check it out, see how it feels comparatively. And I've even got an old butterfly key switch MacBook Air over there to compare to this one. Now, the reason I'm saying the new old is because pretty much everything else, a lot of other things on here are kind of the same. In fact, in some situations with this model, this is the base model. It's basically exactly the same as the previous version with the exception of the keyboard. This one even has the same generation of CPU in it. It does have a little bit more storage. They've kind of separated the 13 inch into two separate models, the two Thunderbolt port and the four Thunderbolt port. So you can spec this thing more aggressively from a performance standpoint, but you're gonna pay a lot more. And then it gets weird because you're thinking, well, if you're into video editing and you're really gonna take advantage of the performance, I don't need this knife. Then why don't you just go for the 16 inch where you're gonna get dedicated graphics that don't exist in here. That was actually quieter than I expected it to be. 13.3 inch, 2560 by 1600. This is the 1 1.4 gigahertz quad core Intel Core i5. So because this is the baseline model, it actually matches up kind of really closely to the baseline model MacBook Air, and it costs a little bit more money. It does have some other things. It has the touch bar on it. It has a little bit more performance considering it is a quad core, but it, there's a lot of overlap there, and it's hard to figure out which one to suggest if somebody is in the Mac camp and has to be on an Apple laptop. That said, if you're willing to step over to the PC side, you can get something in this exact price range with a newer CPU, and a better screen to body ratio. So you obviously the options expand substantially if you're willing to do that. 256 gigs of storage, so that doubled up. Eight gigs of 2133 megahertz DDR3 memory. That's another area where if you step up, that can change. And two Thunderbolt 3 ports instead of four. FaceTime HD camera. Kind of unfortunate that Apple is still using these super low res, low quality webcams. And it's especially apparent right now because everyone's doing so much conferencing on their laptops, Zoom and all the rest of it. Okay, so the benefit with the 13 inch here is obviously portability over the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And if you wanna get the performance closer to the 16 inch, you can spec this thing up to, well, a lot of money to, to definitely 16 inch territory. You can get a lot more CPU performance out of it in a configuration like that. You get the extra Thunderbolt ports, but you're still stuck with integrated graphics, which I don't know if that's gonna make a lot of sense for creative professionals, people who work in video editing and, and so on, but you can spec it like that if you absolutely need the portability over the 16 inch. Now I do wanna do a quick comparison. So I have the lineup here. This is the new 13. Here is the Air. I mean, you can see those are, <laughs> it's not much difference. It's not much difference in weight. Obviously, the remaining dimensions are almost identical because they're both 13-inch laptops. There's a lot of overlap here. Uh, what can I say? I don't know. This one gives you a little bit more performance if you want it. But like I said, if you want to go crazy performance, if you want to get up closer to two grand, then probably the 16-inch is going to make more sense. When you go to the 16-inch, though, you definitely have a bigger footprint if you travel. That's gonna take up a lot more space. It's substantially heavier. It weighs more when it's sitting on your lap. The dream would be a 13 inch where they could slam some dedicated graphics in there. 
that would be really nice because then it would, I think, be a valid alternative to the 16 even at a similar price point. Also inside the package, we have our type C cable, paperwork, stickers and whatnot from Apple and you have their charge brick, which for this model is a 61 watt USB type C charge brick. So we open this up. Of course, you have the display protected. We peel that baby. And this is the nice thing. The MacBook boots up right away as you lift the lid. You gotta appreciate that. So there's the new keyboard straight away. Essentially this new keyboard, the old scissor mechanism, it's, it's, it's like Apple going back to their old laptop keyboards. And what that means is more key travel. Oh, I was speaking to Willie Do. He apparently loves the butterfly key switch, even though any type of crumb is gonna render the, <laughs> the laptop completely useless as we've seen in the past but when it's working, he likes it. I was never a huge fan of it. I like a little bit of key travel. I've told you that before. So any amount of key travel to me is an improvement. And honestly, it was getting pretty bad because with all the issues with the old keyboard, it was, it was hard for me to continue to recommend Apple laptops, given the fact that so many people had hit me up in my email inbox with issues themselves. I was telling people, you better wait for them to revise this situation. They now have, the entire lineup is now sitting on these scissor key switches. In my case, I never really got a ton of use out of this touch bar on the top, but I do actually like and use the Touch ID fingerprint scanner to unlock these devices. And that's up in the top right corner. Another thing that changed on this device, the escape key used to be inside the touch bar. Now there is a physical, it's a dedicated escape key. The 16 inch had that a lot of people. I know a lot of developers were asking for that. So that's back in the 13, that's gonna make some people happy. A lot of people had been hoping for a different type of display setup. There were rumors of a 14 inch MacBook Pro where you could have a screen to body ratio that looks more modern without the bezels on the top, sides, bottom. But it is a bit odd that you have the exact same form factor in the 13 inch department, but on the 15 MacBook Pro, they went and changed the screen size and improved it a little bit. Granted, even that one doesn't have the craziest, slimmest bezels on the market when compared to other products that are out there. This side has a dedicated headphone jack and on the other side you have two Thunderbolt 3 ports. If you spec up the model to a more expensive unit, a uh, more powerful unit, then you're gonna get four Thunderbolt ports, just like on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So you'd have two more on the other side. I'm gonna pull the old 13 inch MacBook Air. This is the one made famous by the video where that I made where the E key was busted, still hanging around the studio. The E key still works on and off. You can just see how comparable these are from a form factor perspective, basically identical. The MacBook Air, you don't have the touch bar. That could be a plus minus depending on the individual, to be honest. Some people like the touch bar, see it as an improvement. Some people wish they just had those extra keys there. You'll also see a difference where the directional keys are. On this unit in the old keyboard, you had bigger side buttons to go left and right. And on the new keyboard, they go back to a half size, as you can see there. Also, the Touch ID button has grown a little bit and it has a matte finish instead of a glossy one. The air does dive down a little bit in the front, so it gets a you get a lower deck where your wrists rest, making it, I don't know, maybe a slightly better typing experience with a, a bit of an angle to it, but it's it's very marginal. The quick brown. These keys seem ever so slightly larger. Am I crazy? They might be. The quick brown. So they have a kind of thud. This was the last generation of butterfly key switches as Apple was hanging on to that technology tightly. It was supposed to be innovative. The future of keyboards, obviously not the case all kinds of problems with it, and they probably should have given up on it sooner. But I kind of understand what they were going for. Jumped over the lazy dog. You try, you're trying to make something super low profile, but still have a kind of a click to it, so you have, have some degree of confidence. But it turns out in reality, there's no substitute from a reliability standpoint, and also from a typing standpoint, there's no substitute to a little bit of key travel. It's something I've been experiencing in a big way on Lenovo laptops with the X series lineup where I'm having tremendous key travel and I'm flying and all the rest of it. This one gets you closer. Certainly this new keyboard is an improvement. The quick brown. And it's not a ton of key travel 
jumped over the lazy dog. It's not it's not a ton, but it's enough that you notice an improvement, at least in, in my circumstance. And another thing I should note, one of the few benefits of the touch bar, in my personal experience using it, is getting quick access to emojis. You can see it saw that I typed dog and I have a couple of different, I'm gonna, I put some dog emojis in there. Keyboard is an improvement. Other aspects, maybe less so, including the webcam. It's gonna be painful to test it out, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And I believe the webcam on all MacBooks is the definition of potato camera in 2020. And you don't hear that term very much anymore because smartphones are so good that those potato cameras don't exist. I am well lit here and I look terrible. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is a test on the webcam on the new 13 inch MacBook Pro for 2020. Uh, yeah, I mean, it'll work. I can jump on a Zoom. I can, I can talk, I can live, but I don't know what it is. You have a huge bezel. You have a giant forehead at the top too. Is that the camera we're working with? I guess so. It's not a priority to Apple. I've seen many people rant and rave about this, but this is what we're working with. So yeah, even with giant lights facing me, it won't, it will not save me. If you're a regular human in a regular environment, it's going to be even worse for you because it's gonna be dimly lit and then the gain goes up and the noise goes up on the camera, so it's unfortunate. Let's do a little speaker test, make sure that those are the same. It's an area that I really commend Apple, the speaker department on their laptops. The 16 inch MacBook Pro, tremendous speakers. Some of the best speakers I've ever heard on a laptop and even the air for something so thin and light. They pay attention to the speakers where other manufacturers don't. Volume, low end is there. Hammerhead True Wireless Earbuds. But then this one is the one that caught my attention because it's got a Pokeball on it and has the same Hammerhead Wireless Earbuds, but in yellow. So I did a little bit of research. Yeah, I don't know, I, I might have to say, Honestly, I might have to say Apple is doing the best job in the game on laptop speakers and no one else, people aren't paying attention enough. Obviously, I haven't tried every laptop on planet Earth, but for a 13 inch laptop to sound like that, you can hear the bass. So when it's all said and done, who is the 13 inch MacBook Pro for? Who is the buyer for this thing? After all, you've got this guy as an option, the Air is an option, even though that's the old model, don't buy the old model, you want the new keyboard. And of course, the big boy, 16 inch now. I think for creative professionals, this one is gonna be the catch-all just because it has the dedicated graphics. And by the time you spec this one properly to a new chip with some RAM in it and some decent storage, you're in this territory anyways. Then on the flip side, if you're just a student, you need the base level stuff, you can hop into this MacBook Air for like a thousand bucks and call it a day and it's gonna do most of what you need. Maybe it's a person who wants to dabble a little bit in the creative goods, but is mostly a student slash web browser and needs to move the thing around a lot. This, these are your choices, live with it or move somewhere else where you feel like you have greater options. I think the unfortunate part is that it would be really nice to see what Apple can do in the more aggressive, screen to body ratio laptop competition that's out there on the PC side. The portability thing increases around the board. The butterfly keyboard is dead. It took Apple a while, but at least we're living in that reality now. Uh, my experience with the 16 inch is that this new one is a lot more reliable. This one hasn't failed. No one sent me an email of this one failing so far. And now the 13 inch joins the old school scissor key switch party, scissor key switches, little bit of travel. We need to figure out those webcams though. <laughs> Come on, Apple, let's figure it out. 1080p, 4K, 4K webcams. I might wanna actually zoom somebody if that, maybe it's better they don't see me full resolution, I don't know. 